Hey guys, and welcome back to all things past and paranormal. In today's episode, I'm going to talk about Morotopithecus, the first known true ape and the possible common ancestor of all apes living and extinct. Morotopithecus lived 20 million years ago, inhabiting the woodlands of what is now Uganda in Central East Africa. Based on dental analyses, it was found that its diet mainly consisted of harder, fibrous foods like leaves. It was through this information that scientists discovered that grasslands in Africa were on the rise even further back than previously thought. Such ecosystems were originally thought to have started their rapid spread some 10 million years ago, but with new findings made as of 2023, it's now known that these events were occurring as far back as 20 million years ago, which means reassessing the environmental circumstances that caused apes to transition to upright walking. Ever since its discovery in 1997, Morotopithecus has undermined a few assumptions about our hominid past. A study published in the Journal of Human Evolution in 2004 discovered that the postcranial or body morphology for this primate was similar to that of the great apes. The femur or thigh bone of this ape was observed to be almost identical to a chimpanzee's as shown here. This had profound implications for the understanding of hominid evolution. Until that point, it wasn't assumed that great ape style locomotion was in development until after the divergence of the lesser apes, which includes gibbons and siamangs, around 17 million years ago. The first explanation proposed in the study was a flawed dating of the Morotopithecus fossil. This was dismissed on the spot in the study, and in the 19 years since the paper came out, the dating hasn't changed. The second explanation proposed was the line of the lesser apes perhaps diverging earlier than expected. I have to disagree with this one personally. Since 2004, molecular dating techniques have given a consistent time range of 15 to 18 million years ago for the divergence of lesser apes. The study's own findings also dismiss this explanation. The other reason I doubt this explanation is the fact that higher sea levels at the time left apes isolated to the forests and woodlands of East Africa until around 17 million years ago. With no new areas to expand to, hominids would have remained stuck in the same environment which would result in a slower evolution and genetic diversion rate. However, around 17 million years ago, lowering sea levels would allow a population of these primates to radiate into Asia, encounter new environmental challenges, and evolve down their own path and eventually give rise to the lesser apes. For the final two explanations, I'm going to play the devil's advocate, and I'll explain why later in the video. The third explanation proposed is that the locomotion style of the great apes evolved first, and the locomotion style of the lesser apes was in fact divergent, and not vice versa as originally assumed. If you watched the last video, or done your own research, then you'll know that the common ancestor of apes and old world monkeys was very much like its modern day monkey counterparts in locomotion and morphology. When comparing the locomotion of a great ape, such as a chimpanzee or gorilla, with a lesser ape, such as a gibbon, it's quite easy to see which locomotive form is more removed from its common ancestor. The great apes still predominantly walk on all fours like their relatives 30 million years removed, whereas gibbons and siamangs are primarily bipeds, and when in the trees, rely almost exclusively on their highly specialized arms, which evolved in response to living in the densely forested canopies of East and Southeast Asia. The only problem with this explanation is that fossil evidence of this kind of locomotion doesn't appear for another 7 million years, and it doesn't even appear in Africa, but in what is now Spain, in the form of Pierrelopithecus and Dryopithecus. The final explanation proposed is the idea that Morotopithecus's locomotion is merely another form of convergent evolution. To quickly explain, Convergent evolution is when two or more unrelated species evolve similar traits to fill a similar niche in their respective environments. Evidence of this has been seen countless times in the fossil record and in still living organisms. If this explanation holds true, then that would make Morotopithecus a part of a side branch of the hominid tree and not a common ancestor to hominids. The problem with this explanation is the same as the previous one. A gap in the fossil record regarding postcranial hominid remains. Now, after going through each explanation, the third and the fourth one stuck out to me having the most plausibility, and to be honest, either one could be true at this point. As I mentioned earlier, 
Post-cranial remains from this period in time are rather lacking due to the 7 million year gap mentioned previously, so we cannot confirm or dismiss either explanation. If further evidence comes to light, I'll make a follow-up video and give my thoughts. Now whatever the explanation may be, one cannot deny the implications for early hominoid evolution will be great, and I, like those of you who follow this subject, will look forward to more finds in great anticipation. This has been All Things Past and Paranormal. Thanks for watching and have an awesome rest of your day.